Alrighty folks, welcome once again to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about this. Gyroscopic precession. Um, it's what keeps this wheel balanced, makes it spin a little bit. Now I've seen many explanations on YouTube, but none of them make a whole lot of sense to me. I like stuff that's logical, you know? I understand, you know, you got the, the whole right hand rule, angular momentum is out in the direction that your right hand sticks, you know, if it curls around the wheel, whatever, you know. I understand that the rules work, but why? Why does that rule exist? And also, by the way, I've made zero dollars on YouTube. I always say how much I made on YouTube so far, so this is my second video, zero dollars. So we're doing good. We'll start with the tire stopped here, okay? What part of the tire, if I just hold it like this and I let go, what part of the tire accelerates the most? Um, now force equals mass times acceleration. So if it accelerates most, it must have the most force, which makes you know a little bit of sense. Okay, so if I hold the tire like this and boom, it flips over like that. This part right here, up top, is being pushed this way out. It's being accelerated this way. And this part at the bottom here, is being pushed this way, right? Rotates this way, naturally, okay? Makes sense. Now, as you get further down the tire, here I'm towards the front a little bit, okay? This is getting pushed a little bit this way, but not nearly as hard, okay? So just watch it again, same back here, up here. Both getting pushed a little bit this way. Yep, they're getting pushed a little bit that way. On the other side, same thing. Once you're below halfway, these parts down below the, the middle are getting pushed this way just a little bit. It's like that. Makes sense, right? So, I mean, that makes logical sense. When I let go of the tire, boom, it flips down. Perfect. But, and here's the trick, force or acceleration does not always mean you're moving in the direction of the force. Now let me explain what that means. So imagine you have a car and it's it's rolling, right? And you you run out and you want to stop it from rolling. So you push, you push in the opposite direction. When you initially start pushing, the car doesn't stop. It's not moving in the direction of your force because you're pushing it back. It's still rolling. It has momentum or inertia. Okay? And eventually, if you push long enough, you'll stop the car and then you keep pushing and you'll get the car to go the other way. That's what happens with this tire. So as you can tell, since I haven't made any money, I went all out on my arrows. Now these are force arrows. Um, it's the force that's on the tire and this makes sense when the tire stopped, right? So I have it like this. The force up here is the biggest. Here it's a little bit smaller. Here it's pushing the other way, and here it's big pushing the other way. Makes sense, as the tire flips down, looks like the forces are pushing that way. Now once again, a force does not imply that something is moving in that direction. So let's just take a look. Remember this, okay? Big force pushing that way, big force pushing this way. Let's remember this, and we'll look at an individual part of the tire. As you can see, I taped off part of the tire, and this is the only part that we're going to be thinking about. We're not going to think about the rest of the tire, okay? And we're going to start it up top, just like this, okay? What forces are on just this part of the tire? Well, they're pushing this way, right? Now, let's assume that at this point, it's just starting, and I haven't spun it yet, okay? This part is not moving this way yet, okay? It stopped, but I'm putting a force on it, and I, as soon as it passes through here, I let go, okay? There's a force on this pushing this way, okay? That is accelerating it, but not, it has zero velocity. It's accelerating, and it accelerates it here too. There's still a force pushing this way on it, right? So it's, it's speeding up in this direction. It's accelerating, okay? And when it gets right here, right here, horizontally, there's no force on it anymore. But because from here to here, there was a force pushing this way, it has accelerated in that direction. It has a velocity now. It's not accelerating anymore when it's right here, okay? Because there's no force. 
forces acceleration, but it has a velocity, a momentum due to the acceleration that occurred from here to here. Okay, the acceleration in this direction. Okay, at this point it's no longer accelerating, but it still has a velocity, and that velocity is in this direction. Okay, now as soon as it passes through here, the forces are pushing the other way. So now the forces are pushing in this direction. Okay, but it still has a velocity, a momentum in this direction. Okay, so the piece of tape's right here. It now has a force this way, but just like the car that's rolling and you push you know, the car the other way to try to stop it, you don't stop it moving instantly with a force. Okay, so the force is this way, but it still has momentum this way. And that continues on, okay, until it's at the bottom. Okay, it, has, it still has a force this way. Now the momentum is well, zero. It's not moving. It's not moving this way or this way. Okay, that makes sense because from here to here, it added momentum this way. It added acceleration. Okay, it has momentum right here. Added acceleration this way. From here and to here, it added acceleration this way. Now, as you can see, that's 90 degrees. Okay, certain amount of time. Okay, the forces are the same. Certain amount of time here, same amount of time to get from there to there. Now, all this acceleration from here to here is canceled out from here to here. This now has zero velocity. Okay, no velocity whatsoever. Okay, as far as this way and this way, it obviously has. Um, yeah, rotational velocity, whatever. Okay, but it doesn't have any velocity this way or this way, okay? Because the force that happened from here to here in this direction makes up for the force from here to here in this direction, okay? Now the tire continues to rotate. Now that it's come to a complete stop, it begins accelerating in this direction because once again, remember the arrows, force is pushing it this way, okay, when I let go. So it's accelerating from here to right here. Right here, there is no force on it e either way. But, like with the car, once you, after, when you finish pushing it, that's when it's at its highest velocity, okay? So it's been pushed, accelerated, in this direction from here at the bottom to here. Now acceleration leads to velocity. So here is where it has the highest velocity. Now it was accelerated from a dead stop here to here in this direction, right? This direction. So which way should it be going when it's right here? Well, it should be going this way. It should be going this way in this direction, okay? Now from here to here, the force has changed. The force on this part of the tire is now in this direction. Okay, but it has a velocity in this direction. So it slows down, it slows down its movement, its velocity in this direction, okay, because it's accelerating. Sorry, I think I, yeah, no, I said that right. The tire comes up and up and up. Once again, this 90 degrees cancels out this 90 degrees. From here to here, that bit of acceleration can cancels out with this acceleration here. But where is the velocity at its highest? The velocity is at its highest when it finishes pushing in a certain direction. Okay, so from right here to right here, it was pushing in this direction, okay? And here, right in the middle is where it stops pushing. When it stops pushing, that's the highest velocity, okay, in that direction. Now let's try it, okay? When the tire gets here, it should be have momentum this way, right? Because it got accelerated from the bottom to the top. So the tire on this side wants to turn this way. And the tire on this side, when it gets over here, it gets accelerated from here to here. Well, it gets accelerated, remember, it gets accelerated the whole way, but it actually has zero velocity here, 
Okay, it has velocity here in this direction. So the tire on this side wants to move this way. Okay, they they work together. They both sides. When the, it gets over here, it wants to go this way. And when it gets over here, it wants to go this way. All right, so let's try it. We spin it, and I let go. And sure enough, it spins in this direction, just as we predicted with the forces. Okay, remember, a quarter of it, okay, it's being accelerated and has a velocity in the same direction. Okay, another quarter of it, it has acceleration in one direction, but it has the velocity in the other because it still has the velocity from that previous quarter. Okay, and then that cycle repeats. The next quarter, they're in the same direction again. And then the next quarter, they're in opposite directions. All right, now obviously, nothing's perfect. There's friction in all the bearings and stuff, and it doesn't last forever. But that's actually what happens. Now, sure, scientists will quantify it using like the right hand rule and angular momentum sticks out from the axis in the right hand rule, blah, 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 stuff like that, okay? But they use that to do the math on it. That's, that's not, ex I mean, it doesn't make logical sense that angular momentum sticks out the axis. I hope that this does, okay? If, if there's a question you still have about it, put it in the comments, okay? I'll try my best to um, explain it more if I need to, I'll put another video up or something like that, but I hope that makes sense. All right, so at this point in the video, you're probably expecting me to just say, yeah, gyroscopic precession helps you stay up on a bike. And I am gonna say that, but I wanna explain why. Okay, now, I don't know how many of you have ridden motorcycles. Motorcycles, this effect is you know much greater than a bike because you have higher speeds, stuff weighs more, stuff like that. But I'm just using it as a demonstration. It happens on a bike too, okay? I don't know if you've ridden before, but you know that once you get up to speed, um, bikes and motorcycles tend to be pretty stable. Um, on a motorcycle, you get up to 35 or whatever, you can take your hands off the steering wheel, no problem, drives straight, doesn't fall over or whatever. And I'm sure many of you have seen uh, like YouTube videos or something of a bike crash or whatever, somebody fall off the bike, being stupid, doing stupid things usually. And uh, the bike gets up and continues to ride on or whatever. There's nobody on it, okay? Bikes are stable because of gyroscopic precession. So let's say you're riding this bike or whatever, and a wind comes. See my arrow here? The wind comes from this side, blows on the bike, okay? It pushes the bike in that direction. That pushes this tire, which has gyroscopic precession, in this direction. Now, like we learned earlier, okay, when you have a force on a tire, the actual movement of the tire happens 90 degrees later. So it happens here, okay, here on the bike. That causes the steering to turn to the right to compensate for it. Now, obviously if a gust of wind comes like this or whatever, it, the bike will move to the right, but it won't fall over. It'll stay um, up, okay? It'll keep the center of gravity above the, where the tires contact the ground. It'll stay balanced. And obviously the driver will have to compensate, you know, so he doesn't go into the ditch or something like that. But the bike will automatically compensate. Wind comes from this side, it pushes the top of the tire. I mean, it pushes the bike, but that causes a force on the top of the tire. The top of the tire right here has a force in this direction, acceleration in this direction, but the actual movement doesn't occur until 90 degrees later, because the same reason we talked about earlier right here, that causes the steering wheel to turn to the right and compensate for it, okay? to keep it balanced. It doesn't keep the bike straight, it keeps the bike balanced. And that's the idea. Also, another interesting thing, when you ride a motorcycle or a bike at, at a decent speed, um, you actually turn the wrong way. Okay, now bear with me here. When you make a turn on a motorcycle or a bike at a decent speed, it's all about leaning. It's not about um, actually turning the, the handlebars or whatever at higher speeds. So let's say I'm riding this bike along and I make a turn to the right. I push the handlebars to the right. I don't make a turn to the right. I push the handlebars to the right. So I push out on this side, okay? That puts a force in this direction on the front of the tire and on this direction in the back of the tire. Now remember, a force does not mean movement, okay? The movement happens 90 degrees later since the bike is going forward and the wheel is turning this way. This force actually happens here, or this, not this force, this movement actually happens here at the top. And that causes the bike to lean to the left. 
Okay, so I push the handlebars to the right, the bike leans to the left, I make a left turn. Okay, you don't believe me? Try it. Get on the bike or motorcycle, be safe, wear all the safety gear. Okay, get up to a decent speed, take your hands off the handlebars. Okay, now take your finger, just one finger, and push on the right handlebar. Okay, so I'm doing the opposite of what I showed earlier. Push on the right handlebar. Okay, if you push on the right handlebar, you should be making a left, right? But if you only push on, if you notice, you will end up making a right. Okay, you've probably never noticed this because you, when you learned how to ride a bike, you just learned that that's the way it was. Your brain is wired to do it. You don't even notice that you do it, but you actually turn the wrong way. Be safe. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.